Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our first video of two on the reaction of photosynthesis. Today, we're going to be talking about the light-dependent reaction. This reaction takes place first in the process of photosynthesis and in the presence of light. That's why it's called the light-dependent reaction. So we're going to start by reviewing what is the chloroplast. So this big green structure that you see here is the chloroplast. Outer membrane, inner membrane right here. Membrane space is right here, which we'll talk about in a bit. And then the structures you've already seen. Granum made out of thylakoids. And then something new, which is called the lumen, the inside of the thylakoid. Surrounding all of the thylakoids is something called the stroma or the aqueous fluid. So what we're going to talk about today is the first reaction in photosynthesis that happens inside the thylakoid along the thylakoid's membrane. So we're going to zoom into this structure right here. So zooming in, you may notice that this looks similar to our phospholipid bilayer, except you don't see any of the phospholipids. Instead, you see a bunch of protein channels. So keep in mind that we're using the same idea, that we have protein channels, we are going to have a concentration gradient, and we're going to utilize those concentration gradients. So on the picture of light-dependent reaction, you are going to start by labeling this side as the stroma. So this is the thylakoid membrane. So remember, this is the membrane. This side is touching the stroma. This side is the inside where that lumen is inside the thylakoid. This is the membrane. We're also going to label it the thylakoid membrane. So to start the reaction, we want to add sunlight into the corner because remember, photosynthesis is utilizing sunlight, so carbon dioxide plus water gives and sunlight gives us glucose and oxygen. So we're trying to figure out where does glucose and oxygen go, what pro, where do, are they made as products, and we also want to see where do we utilize carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. Well, to answer the first question, we're going to start with sunlight. So sunlight and water are going to start the whole process. So what happens is, is a beam of sunlight comes down and when it does, it ends up splitting up water. So water is now no longer H2O, it's a proton or a hydrogen ion, the oxygen um, gas, and then the electron that was holding these together. So we've split out water into three different components. Now this is where it's really important. I said earlier, photosynthesis provides us with oxygen. I, we know that because plants give us oxygen. This process of splitting water is actually how we get oxygen. So it leaves as what we would say waste. We don't think of it as waste, but plants do. Leaves as waste and is gone to utilize somewhere else. So that's where we get oxygen right from the get-go. So the product of oxygen is made right there. But that doesn't end the process of photosynthesis. What has to happen now is this hydrogen ion and this electron are going to do some important things. So this electron is going to move over to what we call the PS2. The PS2 stands for photosystem 2. It's a protein channel we're going to use. And it's actually where we house high energy molecules. So the electron moves over to this protein channel. And the sunlight then comes in again and energizes it. And you get a very energized electron. So this has a ton of energy. This electron is going to leave photosystem 2 and go and find photosystem 1. So as it leaves photosystem 2 and goes to photosystem 1, it crosses a protein channel right here. This protein channel being crossed ends up opening it up and in comes hydrogen. So the high energy molecule crosses the protein channel, ends up over here, it's no longer energized. You can see this one had lots of energy. This one no longer has energy. But what ends up happening is as it crosses, it opens up this channel. So hydrogen moves from high concentration to low concentration. There's no hydrogens in here. So it's going to flow into the system. Not only is it going to flow in, it's going to slowly migrate this way. Okay. So in comes hydrogen. This process happens over and over again as we build up hydrogen down below. So Another energy beam of light comes to the electron. The electron gets energized. It jumps across another channel and ends up over here at ATP synthase. Please make sure that you have labeled your PS2, your PS1, and your ATP synthase. That's important. 
So again, the process occurs where high energy molecule crossed a channel, no longer energized, but hydrogen comes in. This process happens a multiple amount of times as we build up hydrogen in the thylakoid inside the lumen. So again, happens again, building up all of that hydrogen inside. We want to build up hydrogen because a concentration buildup of hydrogen in the thylakoid space drives ATP synthase. All right, and we're going to talk about how that happens here in one second. So we can see all of this hydrogen is built up. Therefore, we have a concentration gradient. High concentration, nothing out here for low concentration. So we want to go down the concentration gradient, okay? We want to go with the concentration gradient, high to low. So hydrogen passes itself through ATP synthase. But as hydrogen passes through ATP synthase, it releases a little bit of energy, which means that we can take ADP and add the phosphate to it to make ATP. So we learned about adding together or building a molecule. So now we have the reduced ATP because it's a high energy molecule. This process happened because hydrogen passed through giving energy to these guys, so an electron, and allowing this process to occur. So now hydrogen is outside of the thylakoid space, okay? It's inside the stroma. So now that it's hanging outside in the stroma again, it needs something to do. So this electron and this hydrogen, so this electron and this hydrogen, are going to find a molecule called NADP+. NADP plus is oxidized at the moment. It doesn't have an electron. But when we put an electron with the hydrogen and the NADP plus, we create another reduced molecule called NADPH. NADPH and ATP are going to be the second part to the story of photosynthesis. This whole process of light dependent reaction is to create these two final products. So right here, we have the process of water splitting into that hydrogen proton, that oxygen and that electron. I wanna point out something very important. This process of using light to break down water is called photolysis. So on your picture where you have water splitting, can you please write the word photolysis? And essentially what it means is it means taking water and breaking it into those three molecules, okay, to use it for what we call the electron transport chain. Now the electron transport chain, I'm gonna go back, is this process here using ATP. Okay, so this process of doing all of this is the electron transport chain. Because we have an electron, it's being transported down a chain. The whole part starts right here with photolysis. Water splitting, okay, because of light. Photo, meaning light. Lysis, meaning breaking. So this part right here is called photolysis. This starts the whole process of the electron transport chain. So again, photolysis is this process here. Breaking down water into the three different things. Now again, it's using it for the ETC. Now there's another really important definition you need to know. This buildup of hydrogen concentration is called chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis is the buildup of hydrogen in the thylakoid space. And as hydrogen moves through ATP synthase, again, from high to low concentration, it drives ATP production. It makes ATP. Making ATP because of hydrogen going through ATP synthase, this is chemiosmosis. Label it right beside thylakoid right here, right beside this on your, on your page where you did earlier, right? chemiosmosis. You need to know this definition. You need to know the concentration buildup of the thylakoid in the thylakoid space to drive the production of ATP synthase. So what you're going to do now is you're going to spend a few minutes writing down all the steps that it takes to go through the light dependent reaction. So you can pause it here, write them out, or you can 
listen as I talk through them really quickly and then write them out after. But essentially the picture I gave you, these are the steps it goes through. So sunlight excites the electron, okay? How did we get that electron? We got it from oxidizing water. Why did we oxidize water? Because the loss of an electron is oxidation. We lost electron from water when we split it into those three components, okay? So we oxidized water or water went through photolysis. So we get that excited electron at photosystem two. It gets picked up by the electron carrier and passed across the membrane protein. This membrane protein is the one that opened up for hydrogen. So membrane, the membrane protein steals all that energy from, the, from that electron as it crosses it and opens the door to hydrogen. So then hydrogen goes through from the stroma into the thylakoid lumen. So now we have this electron that has no energy and it's at the photosystem one. So we take sunlight once again and repeat steps one through five. It crosses a protein membrane, opens up that protein membrane's channels, hydrogen goes inside. Once a ton of hydrogen is inside of the thylakoid space or in that lumen area, it builds up and it builds up until eventually it has to move from a high concentration to a low concentration. So hydrogen then finds its way out of the inside of the thylakoid and it pushes its way through ATP synthase. ATP synthase uses the energy from that hydrogen moving through it to combine ADP and a phosphate to make ATP. So every time hydrogen passes through, ADP becomes ATP. What happens is when that process is done, we now have a leftover hydrogen and an a leftover an electron. This hydrogen and electron need to go somewhere. So they combine with a product called NADP plus, and they create a very high energy molecule called NADPH. In order to finish the story of photosynthesis, we need to take ATP and NADPH and bring it into the next part of the story, which is called the light independent reaction. So photosynthesis is made up of two reactions, but it is one process. So we will see the second part of the reaction next time. If you have any questions, please let me know. Make sure your picture is fully filled out as there will be a drawing quiz on that picture. And please make sure all the steps are filled in so that you understand what your picture is saying. Have a great evening.